Art changed throughout history. Art, wow. Well, you know, one of the things about art is that you tend to have artistic periods that change over time as well because of new techniques and, and new attitudes. And often art represents a, a more or a broader um, perspective of, of the time period. For example, the Renaissance, you know, why did it change? It changed because, you know, for, with, with the art, with the patronage of the arts by with the wealthy in Italy, people started to try new things. They tried new techniques. They had new materials. Um, later on with the Northern Renaissance and the introduction of oil painting, you now have new things. So then people will do that and then for a while it'll take those ideas a little bit to, to sort of catch on and to develop. And then after a while people say that they want to try something new. They want to take a challenge. They want to move to a new phase. And then you know, you'll go from um, the Renaissance into, say, the Baroque period. And the Baroque period also had a, a stimulant which was the, the Protestant Reformation. You know, the Baroque period is very closely attached to Catholicism. So the Catholics felt, you know, we need a response to the secular nature of the, of, of the Renaissance. We need to have something that sort of counters the Renaissance because, you know, it, it's, it's not religious enough. So the Baroque art period was a shift. A shift to a new phase where art became more religious. You know, the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment was a phase where everyone thought very rationally. And then after a while, people got tired of it and said, well, everything isn't rational, so we need to have this shift. So it shifted into a new phase, which was Romanticism. And when you shift to Romanticism, now people start to consider emotion rather than simply looking at things reasonably or rationally. But one of the weird things is, it's never and even split. You know, when you switch from phases to phase, and I know your whole thing's on phases, so, even in your lives, you don't one day say, okay, this phase is over, and then tomorrow we're going to start a new phase. There's always a blurring of, of the lines. During the transitional period, you have some characteristics of the old phase blending in with the newer phases, characteristics, and then eventually over time, the older characteristics will die off and the newer ones will become more prominent until you're completely in a new phase. But it's not, again, like I said, it's not until hindsight that you really see the break from one phase to another. It, it's a very gray and blurry transition. Um, how did the change in art and like, like general art, like all the overall the time, like how it changed like, in like the 20s and stuff, how did that reflect the time period? Uh, yeah, I think you know, the art period, the 20s in uh, particular, I think it's really interesting. One of the things the 20s was, was uh, that made the 20s important was that coming out of World War I, everyone was disillusioned. World War I was a very horrible war, and, and a very interesting war, but a very horrible one. And what happened is everyone was so depressed after it, everyone saw things that they thought they would never see and, and were um, exposed to horrific sights that when they came home, there were, there were a couple of different reactions to it. The first one was um, celebrating in the Roaring Twenties because economically we were booming in America, and you're saying, well, just live it up because, you know, it's the whole eat and drink, eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow we'll die idea. Um, but also you have a sort of lost generation element where the disillusionment, and that's what you see a lot in the literature and the art of the 1920s, you know, F. Scott Fitzgerald and some of the Hemingway stories uh, of post-World War I. Um, it, people were just, they lost hope, they lost faith, and the art of that period shows a lot of that. You know, something interesting about that. 